as we surrender to the Holy Spirit, he will heal every soul in this place in Jesus' name. The next tribute from the nephew, which they put together from Oko Dako Mountain. Let's welcome him and his come to the four pits this morning. Welcome you, welcome him and his come. It is hard when a love on the path and nothing to put into words the sorrow we feel. Our dearest Uncle Danson, where are you? Where are you, Uncle Danson? We grieve for you. Words cannot describe this difficult moment. We still can't believe you are no longer here with us. Ramstar really. Why? Losing you illuminates our fears, but it also really states our hope for eternity. Today, with a heavy heart, we remember our dearest Uncle Danson. He was an affable gentleman, very welcoming, a man of few words but very jovial and extremely hospitable. He was so soft-spoken, slow to anger, and with a calm demeanor. In fact, he always had that calmness in his voice, which could calm any storm. Uncle Danso was our dearest uncle for many reasons. He was the uncle we spent most of our time with while growing up. He ensured we had all it took to start each day. We remember how he would, he would cook and gather us around to eat communally in a big pan. After eating, we sit, relax, make fun, and tease each other. He taught us many things, how to wash, iron, dress, and clean the house. Uncle Danso was very supportive. He ensured we were the crowd champions in any competition. Also, he made sure that we were less troubled. His money was our money, and our troubles were his troubles. He was always ready to help and even extend each help to our friends we brought home. He always put us first and showed the importance of caring for each other. He was our man. He was lovely and pleasant to be with. We recall it with, with fond memories how we followed him to places. He was our hero, champion, and confident. We had our sign language and communicated perfectly among colleagues without them understanding us. Oh, Uncle Danso, how could we expect to send random text message to check on us? Who are we going to confide in with the things that trouble us? Our uncle is gone. But we take solace in the fact that the heaven has gained an angel. He is smiling down on us. Uncle Danso, we are confident that you are in God's bosom. The scripture says, for, for whether we live we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. That is Romans 14, 8. Uncle Danso, we will truly miss you. You have left a charm in our hearts that there is nothing to replace. May God bless the memory of you. May God Almighty keep you safe. Rest in peace. To the resurrection day. What would you buy? Yeah, what would you buy? Rest in peace, Uncle Danso. Rest in peace, Anibi. Please appreciate him once again for that. I appreciate our prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
while we're rising to our feet for the next program, for the next hymn, which will be amazing praise for the choir. Praise God.
presence of the Lord as we bring our minister to come and minister to us with a word of exhortation. Please open up your spirit to receive from the man of God, Minister Sam Dagodoro, as he comes to the pulpit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone this afternoon. I bring greetings first of all and word of comfort from our senior pastor, Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, and our resident pastor, Pastor Yemisi Ashimolo, as well as the entire KICC family this afternoon. And that is to the family, the, the Matella family, to just let you know that we are standing with you at this time, both in identifying with your pain at this moment and acknowledging at the same time that His grace will be sufficient for you. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. It is my belief and understanding that we are here to celebrate the passing of a righteous man and not just the death of another righteous man. Simply because the scripture says that righteousness, you know, that the, the, the passing of a righteous person is simply the fact that a righteous person when they die, they are asleep. They are not dead. I know that might be difficult for someone to rationalize. But according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, you know, he makes it clear that when a righteous person dies, he says, and now, from verse 13, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know that what will happen to the believers who have died. So you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. When something like this happens, there is that tendency, just like my sisters, Sister Emily's, you know, testimony ourselves reads that there's that tendency to want to ask the question why and if i want to be honest and truthful that question is fitting and that's the reason why we're gathered together this afternoon in church where you know our brother identifies with his faith and for the few minutes that we have, there will be a few scriptures that would suppose that is supposed to give you an inkling, a sort of answer to the why. Romans 14, verse 6 says, If we live, it's to honor the Lord, and if we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. The above suggests that there is no loss when you are in Christ. There's no loss, whether you're leaving, whether you pass. There's no loss if you are in Christ. According to this text, our dearest brother, uncle, cousin, friend, and in some cases, colleague, Glenn Daniel Danso Mantella, is currently asleep in the Lord. And by the grace of God, we will see him one day, either at the second coming of our Lord or at the last supper with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I repeat again for emphasis and to reassure us that the passing of the righteous is a transition to glory. Is a transition to glory. For a righteous person doesn't die but is simply sleeping. Proverbs 10, 7 says, The memory of the righteous is blessed, 
the memory of the righteous is blessed. And to the three books that have been read, I want you to take comfort in that. That my brother has joined the journey of life with you in however way you connect with him. And has left some indemnable memories with you. Let that be part of the thing that will comfort you. It pleased God that he will step out at this point. But while he was with you, particularly with his wife, while he was here, like you testified, he left a number of memory that will last you a lifetime. Let those things comfort you. The passing of our brother, Glenn, is one that came to me personally and I believe to many other people here in Prayer City as unexpected, somewhat surprising, and to some a shock. He was definitely a God lover. From the commitment and faithfulness to this house, he was faithful, committed to knowing, to knowing God. He was hungry for God's word and for God's presence. His attendance at most of the services and events that we have here is testament to that. And it's interesting that every time you see him, he wears a smile. He's one of those people you wonder, this brother must have everything completely all together. Not even to the fact of how he comports and carries himself. He was a perfect gentleman. Always coordinated. I mean, you just need to look through the pictures in the hand, in the leaflet you're holding. You will see him coordinated every time. Somewhat ambassadorial in his look and in his carriage. I admire him. I'm somebody who often take note of little details like that and it's ever so respectful ever so respectful saying hello every time it doesn't matter whether you cross his path two or three times in the same day you will say hello and almost you know deferring to you such a gentleman and like i said his memory like that of a righteous person is blessed that's what I remember about him and the fact that I know I was talking to his older brother yesterday and there was a reason for me to just remark that we know where he is. There was a reason for me to remark to say that we know where he is. He has somebody who was giving his heart to Jesus who has asked Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. And we know for that very reason, according to the word of God, someone who has been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the marvelous light of his dear son. The Bible says his name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. We know where he is. It is painful that he's left us now without a doubt. It is painful. And nobody will probably know that more than his wife would. And it's the immediate family. It is painful. We're not going to deny that. We're not going to shy away from that. But I want to just leave you a very quick point about the fact that the scripture says in Psalm 116 verse 15 that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the faithful servant of the Lord. The New Living Translation says, renders that differently and say the Lord cares deeply when the loved ones die. The Lord cares deeply when the loved one dies. The Holman translation says the death of his faithful one is valuable in the Lord's sight. This is suggestive of the fact that the decision for God to allow the death of a saint is not one that is taken lightly, easily, accidentally or even incidentally. There is 
There is a reason behind it. God knows that reason. He is the only one that understands that reason. The scripture said, He watches over the sparrow. So if he watches over the sparrow, how much more? Someone that is precious to him. So he knows about it. I just want you to think about that for a moment. If he cares for the lilies in the valley, how much more someone that has made a commitment to him for him to be their Lord and Savior? I mean, to be, he, you know, he, took, he wants to be, he, he's made a commitment to be a child of God. How much more? Don't you think God is mindful about that person? That's the reason why that scripture says, precious in the sight of God is the death of the righteous. And you already said, whether you live or you die, to God is an honor. So I just want to encourage you to let you know that the scripture makes us to appreciate in answering that question that is in your mind that God is very much aware of our brother's person. It's not accidental. The circumstances leading up to it might look accidental. But God is aware. The other day I was listening to a respectable you know, woman of God, and she said something about the fact that many of us consider age to be something that we hold dearly. And he said, Some of you that are here, he was in a conference, some of you that are here today, he said, You are probably 35 years old, but in your destiny, you're probably going to be here for another 15 years at the age of 50. He said, For you, you're already old. Because the time that is left is what you are going to do with that time. And so there are some of you, you're here, you're 50, but you're not going to live here until you're 95. You said you're still very much young. What are you going to do with the next 45 years of your life? I'm saying the death of the righteous is something that God is very much aware about. Just to bring another perspective, John 11, 25 to 20, you know, John 11 from verse 17, but the emphasis is going to be on 25 and 26. It's when Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem. And many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Some of the conversations that we're having now. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Verse 23, critical, says, Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. And I say to everybody here this afternoon, family, friends, colleagues, our brother will rise again. You're not convinced. I said, our brother, according to the word of God, that's why we're in church this morning, is to get some form of answer. Praise the Lord. It's not a ritual, especially not this church. It's to get an inclination as to what does the word of God say when we find ourselves in a situation like this. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. You are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the people, were, when, when the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave to hastily, you so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. So they followed her. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled. <coughs> Where have you put him? And then verse 25, I'll read again. It says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes 
in me will live even though they die. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, he says, they will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And that's a question for every one of us to answer. He is the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Praise the Lord. Our perception of time is linear, but God's perception of time is eternal. The moment you come into relationship with the Lord, that's pretty much the time, the, the, the period that your perception of time becomes eternal. We haven't got the time this afternoon. I just want to encourage the family and to encourage those of us who are here that we know where our brother is and you should take comfort in the fact that we're going to see him someday. Yes, it will be tough. But the Holy Spirit is there to comfort you. Please just open yourself to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help you through this difficult time. I'm saying this not just as a qualified priest in that sense. I'm saying it from somebody who had had a similar experience. And I know that if you open yourself to the Holy Spirit, it will help you to heal. It will help you to bear the loss. And it will make it that tired better. That's why the scripture says we should not, it says we should not in any way grieve like those who don't have Christ. Because if we do, he said, then what's the point of us holding on to Christ and living right and doing all that we are doing? He said if we are doing that, you know, Galatians, um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, he said we are all men most miserable. Take comfort in the sense that our brother is with the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. It brings light and understanding unto the simple. Lord, do only at this point what you can do. And that is to comfort and to encourage everyone. And to strengthen them in their inner man. And to show them the light out of all currently this difficult time. Guide them. Direct them. Strengthen them. Let your love surround them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I please ask the family, just the family to rise up. We're going to pray very briefly for the family. To just rise up. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you this very day. Holy Spirit, Spirit of comfort, Spirit of power and of mind, I pray for this family, our family this morning, in Manteras, and those who are connected to them, our family. Ask in the name of Jesus that your hand will rest upon them. That your glory will rest upon them. That your power will rest upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord you will strengthen them like no other time. Even at this time in Jesus' name. You will surround them like a shield. Lord, you will surround them like a shield. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem. Lord, I pray that your hand of power will rest upon them. Affliction will not rise a second time. Lord, we decree, we declare, affliction will not rise a second time. Lord, in your mercy, you will direct them. Peace will reign upon their heart. Your joy will fill their heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, you will make every crooked way straight. 
Lord, you will fill the gaps that will be left. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, your name will be glorified even through this incident. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we honor you. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate you, Mr. Sam, for that word of encouragement. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let's listen to this following announcement while the funeral people will be coming in just now. We will be progressing to, to Chatham Cemetery, Mestor Road, ma 46 hh is in the front of the flyer that we have. And also for 12 o'clock, and also we need to get back into this place, which is in Chatham, but that's gonna be in the Grand Hall, Grand Hall by 1.30. Grand Hall, KICC Prayer City, Buckmore <coughs> Park, Chatham, Anytime from 1.30. Praise the Lord. And I invite the choir to sing the last song. While they're singing the song, they will come and take the coffin and will now abide with me.
the entrance. You don't drive straight from that one. They go in there. You go through here and then it takes you through the, the grand one. I just drop you guys, I'm going to change people.
beloved Glenn Daniel Dancer Mentella to the grave to rest in peace to the resurrection of the dead at our Saviour's return to earth when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the same that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting? Mm. O grave, where is thy victory? For as much as the spirit of the departed has returned to God, who gave it, we therefore commit Glenn, Daniel, Danso, Ventella's body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the genuine resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming in glorious majesty to judge the world. The earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. Amen. Amen. I'd like to just encourage the family if you want to, like, put some stuff stand. Or I have petals. Or petals.
from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we just want to share a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this very point. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for the life of our brother. We commit him, O oh God, into your mighty hand. And we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that his legacy will speak even through, Lord, his family, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We pray, Lord, that God, you will comfort and strengthen every member of the family, friends, yes. Lord, colleagues, in the name of yes, Jesus. Father. You will give them the fortitude to move on, O oh God, in yes. the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You will give them the enabling, mm -hmm. Father, to always look up to you, yes, the Lord. author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. Yes. We thank you, Lord, today. Mm -hmm. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. And Lord, we commit even after this into your hand that you will take absolute control. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Let your hands surround them. Let your everlasting arms not, Father, be removed from underneath them. Yes, Lord. Father, protect them. Yes, Lord. Father, guide and lead them. Let your name be glorified in yes, their lives. Oh we thank you, mighty God. Amen. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Can we just ask everybody just to move that side of the grave and we had the grave diggers coming in?